Today I'm going to be watching this video, it's called How Australia Made Me a Better Man. I've been watching a lot of people's experiences living in Australia or just travelling there, learning about what they like about the country. This one is actually quite a intense title, How It Made Them a Better Man. So I think going through from the thumbnail is five reasons why. Let's check them out and tell me what you think about this. In this video I'd like to talk about how traveling Australia for a year has changed my attitude and me as a person in general. See, I wasn't in my early 20s. I didn't just graduate school and decided to go overseas to embrace the spirit of my youth as most backpackers in Australia. I was already 29 and I had a pretty good career as a police officer. Damn right you heard, I was a copper. For nearly 10 years I had served before I decided to resign. I lived in my own flat. I drove a brand new car and I was just paying back the loan the bank gave me for it. And the next logical step would have been to get a girl pregnant and start a family. But that just didn't feel right. I wasn't happy with how my life went. So I gave up on everything. I left my flat, I sold the car, cancelled all the life insurances and whatever insurances that I had and said goodbye. On a work and holiday visa Big I decision. flew to Sydney. I started the journey with my now ex-girlfriend, uh, just wanted to mention that once. We had just enough money to buy a car for about two and a half thousand dollars and then we worked and traveled our way along the east coast. What impact this trip has had on me, I'd like to tell you now. Kindness. I met so many incredibly kind people in Australia. People that helped me through tough times. And there were so many situations, it would be too much for one video to mention that all. And another video I talked about the uh, caravan park owner that couldn't bear to see us sleeping in the rooftop tent when it was pouring rain for a couple of days. And she invited us to stay in her caravan for a few days and yeah, we, we just stayed there free of charge. In Tasmania, we had the worst time you could possibly have. We didn't have any money at all, we didn't know how to afford the ferry back to the mainland. And we, we were just having a very very rough time in Tasmania. But it was my girlfriend's birthday and I wanted to do something for it, so I invited her. I took her out to a Thai restaurant. I, I mean I couldn't afford it, but I, I, I wanted to do something for her birthday, right? We must have looked pretty depressed. There was one guy sitting next to us on, on his table. He was in his 50s maybe. When he finished his meal, we hadn't ordered yet, he stood up and he came over to our table and he put his hand down on our table and I was looking up to him. I, I didn't really know <laughs> what was he up to. And then he said, your dinner is paid for or something like that. Then he lifted his hand and he left a $100 bill and then he went away. I, I couldn't really say anything, I was just looking after him and he went out the door and we were, you know, looking around searching for the hidden camera. I'm not saying that this is a everyday thing to happen in Australia, but still. And as I said, there were many more situations. What I want to say is, this experience in Australia has changed me towards a direction of where I want to be more aware of people in need. So this is something that I want to bring to Germany. There are also kind people in Germany, but I think not quite to the same extent as I have experienced that in Australia. And I want to be the guy. And Australia has made me the guy, I hope. Social. It's like that old thing, it's like just being kind to someone, it kind of encourages them to be kind to another person. You can really see that's the way in Australia. It's obviously something that's always been there with people in Australia. Australians just having that mentality of caring for like other people in the country and so on. And yeah, again, it may be one of those things that a lot of people in Australia maybe take for granted. I'm sure a lot of people do appreciate it that live there. But it's like being someone like me who lives in Asia, it's the completely the opposite. People are very reserved. They keep themselves to themselves. Definitely, they don't care enough to if you're looking sad to pay your dinner or anything like that. Uh, Maybe being in the UK were a bit more like Australia, uh, like being a bit more friendly and stuff, but Australia is just a very unique country in that respect, I think, like, and, like, seeing people in the comments talk about it, I think people in Australia do realise it and do appreciate it, but 
just when you live in other countries and have that lack of care for your like your fellow person, it's just uh, it makes a show just a special place for me anyway. Interaction. In Australia, people like to talk to each other. Not so much in Germany though. When you talk to a stranger, then most likely because you want something. Rarely just for the sake of the conversation. You don't talk to the cashier at checkout. You say hello and goodbye. That's it. I loved how you could just talk to anyone about anything in Australia and it was never weird, it was never awkward. I met so many interesting people and I listened to so many interesting stories because in Australia people just came to me and just started a conversation just for a chat. That, that's all they wanted. And it was great how many people I met. It was great to listen to that many stories. I exchanged so many phone numbers. I have so many people in Australia that I can call right now. Like w Within the last year I have met many more people and made many more friends in Australia over the last year than I have made the last 10 years in Germany. It was a bit hard to get used to just having a random conversation with with just anyone but now I love it and I don't want that to go away so let's see how it works out but when I go back to Germany I want to talk to people more I want to talk to the cashier I, w I want to talk to just anyone it, it's gonna be weird and I will receive a lot of weird looks and people will think that I try to sell them something <laughs> but yeah I, I, I will still go for it and um, I hope that I can make more friends i think <laughs> just yeah i think that's like related to the first one as well it just takes one person to like make that move and then encourage other people to maybe have a similar mentality but if no one does that everybody just stays the same way again maybe like i i think about it when i go back to scotland again i just get used to living here in asia and just keeping myself to myself and whatever i don't really it doesn't bother me too much but when i go back to scotland to visit family be maybe standing at the bus stop or something people just start talking to you as well like i do kind of miss that like it's nice to just have that friendliness uh if it's making friends and things like that as well it's being an adult sometimes sometimes it can be difficult to make friends but i sure it seems like the sort of place you can like move there and there's no problem with that everybody's open as long as you have a good menta good positive mentality you're friendly you like you share the sense of humor and so that sort of thing i think you could probably make friends quite easy in Australia, tell me if that's the case for you. Is it maybe different for Australians living in Australia? Is it easier for foreigners to go there and make friends? I don't know. Since this is probably the most obvious one, but my perception of distances has completely changed ever since I have been traveling Australia. In Australia, you drive for a long, long time, especially when you're a traveler and you spend your whole time in the car anyways. And that really has changed me. In Germany, when you drive for two hours, that's at least an overnight stay. You wouldn't drive two hours out and two hours back on one day. Too far. <laughs> now that I have spent so many kilometers on Australian roads, I feel like driving has become second nature to me. I feel like now I can go to Italy to eat a pizza and go back home. <laughs> Italy is about a three hour drive to where I live. Also my dad, he lives about three and a half hours away and sometimes I would see him once every six months. Not because we're having a bad relationship, but three and a half hours is just too far away. Now I feel like I could visit him once every two weeks. Not considering the fuel prices, which are considerably higher in Germany than they are in Australia. So yeah, subscribe if you want me to see my dad more and also <laughs> leave a like because the button gets all shiny and colorful and <laughs> whatnot <laughs> yeah so what what are the petrol prices in australia is that something that's been increasing that's something i would definitely miss here in malaysia here i think it's about if you convert to pounds like british pounds it's probably like 40p per liter it's very cheap they have a lot of subsidies and things so driving here is like ridiculously cheap local cars are cheap as well what about Australia? Is that something you've seen increasing in prices? I know it's like the cost of living can be quite high in a lot of things like rent or with mortgages, groceries and that sort of thing. What about petrol? Is that expensive? Is it expensive to drive in Australia? Live now. I was always very worried about my future, about if I would have enough money when I'm old. So I dedicated myself to work, retirement insurances and whatnot. And now that I'm nearly 31 years old, I thought I would have figured out everything by now. 
I should have a plan for my life. I should be successful in whatever I'm doing. And at the beginning of my journey, I had the doubt if I was making the right decision or if I was spoiling my future. By the way, I hope you do not hear that rain too much, which is coming down on my car. <laughs> in Germany, it feels like it's all about what car you drive, how big your house is, and just to be successful in life by having a lot of money. And this is always how I put myself in a certain scale of, okay, he's that successful and I'm just so much successful. But then traveling Australia, working in Australia, I met so many people that have changed my mindset completely. Australians as well as other foreign travelers that were heaps older than myself and they still hadn't figured it out. They were just embracing the moment. They were living their lives. Anyways, that has made me come to the realization that I will always be so proud of what I am doing at the moment. I am much rather poor when I'm 75, live in a crappy flat, but be rich in experience and memories than having a lot of money. And that is something that Australia has taught me. To just be grateful for what you have, to be healthy, to live in the moment, to embrace your life, rather than trying to chase a certain perfection that society is trying to tell you that this is what you have to be in order to be successful, because that's just not how it is. And I'm very thankful that I have come to that realization. When I'm 75, I might say, Johnny, why didn't you prepare for your retirement? But what I would be really interested in is what your thoughts are. Please let me know in the comments what you think on that topic. I'd really like to know what you think about it. Hard. Yeah, what do you think about it? Like he's talking at the beginning there, it's maybe like less materialistic in Australia compared to like Germany in this case, I guess. Also, I can compare it to the UK. I think people are more like that mentality in Germany where they want like the big house, they want the expensive things, very materialistic. And yeah, maybe in Australia it's less like that, but I guess there's probably still people that have that same mentality as well, maybe just less. Uh, but what do you think about that? I guess he's got, got a kind of freer mindset now having been in Australia, but I would imagine there's still people who take that sort of thing seriously, planning for retirement and so on. Uh, what do you think about that? Work. When I was still working as a copper, and I would tell my friends or whoever that I'm going to work, many people would say, you're not working. You just drive around in your car all day, or you sit in front of your desk. That's not real work. Please and to some extent, that was true. You could have a pretty comfortable life as an officer if you wanted. Of course, there were certain situations where you just had to be, you know, effective and, you know. <laughs> but the worst thing about it was that the more people told me that I didn't have a real job, I started to believe it. I thought, man, this is all I can do. I will never be able to do a physical 9 to 5 job work, 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 actual work, and then go back home. But in Australia, I tell you, I worked like a bull. I was picking fruit. I worked as a stable hand. I was a waiter. I was a housekeeper and many more things. And this has shown me that I can do a lot of stuff. I can, I'm, I'm, I'm more than capable of doing hard work. And I was very surprised of myself that I could not only keep up with everyone else, but I was good. I was doing a pretty good job at whatever I was doing. This had brought me to the realization that I was always limiting myself because of self-doubt. I always told myself that I couldn't do this or I couldn't do that, but traveling Australia and doing all of those jobs, all of those shitty jobs that would make my hands bleed, that would, that would make me fall into my bed dead after work, it made me realize I could do all of that stuff and I'm good at it. There's no need for self-doubt and that I could become anything, that I could do anything that I wanted. And the only person that could really keep me from becoming what I want or from doing what I want is myself. And there is no need from holding myself back because I am capable of doing a lot of stuff. And for that realization, I will always be very, very thankful. Of course, it trip like that shapes your personality 
and it has changed me in many ways. But I think these are the key things that I wanted to talk about. And I'm really looking forward to reading about your thoughts in the comments. Yeah, tell me what you think about that. So it's like, it seems like he's had quite a spiritual awakening in Australia. It seems to be like a lot of people go to Australia for that reason, to try and uh, maybe see the better life, see what's possible out there. Being from the UK, I can't really imagine people going to the UK and getting that same experience. I think if people went to the UK, they'll probably be like, that will make them happy to go back to their home country. They'll be like, oh, I really appreciate my home country, seeing how depressing the UK is. But I sure was just this place, man. It, like, obviously, there's a lot of people go there for like their gap year, go there for this like long term travel, and they actually have. I would say the majority, fast majority, ninety nine percent of people would just have that a better experience, have a great experience, and he obviously had that as well in a lot of different ways. So it's pretty cool to see someone's life being changed just by going to a certain country. In this case, Australia. Tell me what you think about that. Have you seen anybody else's life be changed like that? And um, what do you think about the points that he made? Thanks.